join kids hat family <laughs> Tofu, can you take the floor please? I will climb up the ladder and do the shelves at the top. Why do I have to do the floor? Because the shelves are higher and tougher to clean. You are just saying that because you don't want to do the floors. Oh boy, Tofu, it's not that. You won't be able to reach the shelves, trust me. Sure, I will be. Okay. Come on up then. But let me tell you, you're being like the crab. Like the crab? Now what's that? Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time there lived a crab in the sea. I am so bored of living in the sea. I think the meadow behind the beach is a better place for me to be. I will move there. And so the crab came out of the water and made its way beyond the beach. and into the meadow Ah this is the life I wonder why I didn't do this earlier Unknown to the crab a fox had been watching him since the moment he came into the meadow One day when he found the right moment he attacked him I have been waiting for this moment I will eat you now The crab tried to hide but it didn't know how to Not on land anyway he was not familiar with the terrain at all It's my fault. I should have stayed in the seas and the beach where I belong and know how to protect myself. Well, yes, but now it's too late for you. Saying so, the fox quickly ate the crab and ended his life. Do you still think you can handle the tall shelves? Ah, uh, I think I will wait till next year to find out. For now, I will just take care of the floors. Oh God, somebody help me. The insect has bitten me. Oh God, come, let me put some ice. Why did it happen to me? Let me tell you a story. The fox and the stork. Once a fox and a stork were friends, and the fox invited the stork for dinner. Dear friend, I wish to invite you for a meal at my home. I will cook a delicious soup for you. I would love to come. The 
fox made a delicious soup as promised. The fox was very clever and played a cruel trick. When the stork visited his home that evening, she was given a shallow dish filled with soup. Thus the fox could easily lap up, but the stork could only wet the end of her bill in it. I have made this delicious soup. Myself, enjoy your meal. Poor stork did not say anything and pretended to enjoy the meal. At the end of the evening, however, the stork went home hungry. One week later, the stork invited the fox for lunch at her house. Dear fox, why don't you come to my house for lunch? I am cooking fish for the meal, said the stork. Thank you, dear stork. I would be happy to come, said the fox. The stork made delicious fish. When the fox arrived, the stork served the fish in a pitcher. The fox stared hungrily at the food, but he could not taste it. He had a thick snout and couldn't eat from the pitcher. So all he could manage to do was to lick the outside of the pitcher. Did you enjoy the lunch, my friend? I made it especially for you, asked the stork with a nasty smile. The fox remembered his cruel trick on the stork and had to confess that the clever stork made him learn a lesson. The stork enjoyed the meal while the fox looked on sheepishly and went home hungry. So Tofu, as the fox did bad to the stork, the stork did bad to him too. Because one bad turn deserves another. Now I understand. I guess we have come too far from our camp. When will we go back? I am feeling hungry. It will take some time, Tofu. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop! Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, all that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God, I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. The moment he leaped on the well's wall, 
to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me! This well is really deep. How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh goat! Isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox! You were right! This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, Wait a second! How in the world will we manage to get out of this well? Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well. The goat, once again, without thinking twice, does as the fox said. Hey fox! What about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha! I guess you have to think about it on your own. B but I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions. So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu, always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries, they might have been harmful for you. Uh, yeah, dear. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp and I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go! What happened Tofu? Why are you so sad? Tia, I am sad because I lost my bicycle last week. My friends enjoy the ride on their bicycles, but I can't. I wish they lose their bicycles too. Tofu, I never knew you will be so mean. You sound very selfish. You should stop this right away. Uh, Tia, Tia, sorry Tia, but I was really sad. I don't have one, but my friends do. I just feel left out. It's okay, Tofu. I can understand that you are sad. But wishing bad for others is not good. We should always think good for others. Come, I'll tell you a story about a fox who became a laughing stock amongst his friends just because he was very selfish. The Fox Without a Tail One day, a fox was walking in a forest. Suddenly, he heard a huge snap and in an immediate reaction, he jumped. But something awful happened to the poor little thing. He found his tail stuck in a trap and this gave a sharp pain in his rear. Oh! Ah! That hurts so much! Oh! My tail is stuck in a trap! What would I do now? After battling for long with his tail and the trap, he gave a final try to it and with that came another snapping voice. 
tears coming out of his eyes, the fox moaned. Oh, my tail, my tail! I lost my furry, beautiful tail. What would I do now? I'll become laughing stock of my skulk now. This is so embarrassing. And he walked deeper into the forest with his head bowed down in sorrow. When suddenly an idea struck his mind, he decided to call a meeting of all his friends. Friends, I have gathered you for a reason today. While walking through the forest, I kept wondering. We have eyes, nose, ears, teeth, legs, all for some reason. But why, why do we need a tail? It's a useless thing and keeps bothering us for some reason or the other. It either gets in way of our sitting or when kept outside is left for someone to trip over. So after a deep thought, I cut off my tail and want you to do the same. It feels great without that useless thing. The skulk of fox kept looking at the fox in amazement as to what he was saying. It's true, but nobody has really thought about them without the tail. It surely would be painful to do that. Meanwhile, a young agile fox jumped on to the higher place and addressed the skulk. Are you saying this because you no longer have a beautiful furry tail? Here you are just talking about your self-interest so that you don't get embarrassed and feel left out of the skulk. And the rest of the skulk went off laughing away and discussing as to how selfish and mean the fox is. In order to not feel embarrassed, he wants everyone to chop off their tail. Tia, now I understood. I shouldn't be selfish and not think bad for others. Ha <laughs> Come. I'll buy you an ice cream, Tofu. Tia, yesterday in our class, my friend Ben forgot to bring one of his textbook and Ted offered to share his textbook with him. Ben promised Ted to help him in learning football after school. But after school, when Ted asked Ben to help as promised, instead of helping, Ben left for his home. That's bad. One should always stand by their promises. But Tia, today again Ben forgot his textbook and when he asked Ted to help, Ted refused. Tofu we should be sensitive towards every human being. You know, we should always help people around. Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in the kingdom of a very humble king. The princess was so pampered by her father that she turned out to be a little proud of the fact that she is a princess. Many a times the king asked her to be more humble towards the people around her because that's the way a princess should be. I know, my little princess, 
that you are my pampered child. But you should be little more empathetic towards other people. Everybody is same. It's just that some are fortunate, some are not. But the princess just ignored what her father had to say and went out to play with the golden ball that her father had gifted her on her birthday. She loved the ball, but no sooner had she started playing that her ball bounced and went into a pond. Oh God, my favorite golden ball. I would give anything to get back my favorite ball, anything. Hearing the princess cry out loudly, a frog leaped up and sat on a lotus leaf and said, Princess, I just saw what happened. I will get the golden ball back for you. But you have to promise me something. How in the world did the slimy frog talk? The princess only wanted her ball back. So she hurriedly said yes. What is it that you want in return? I want you to take me back to your palace and pamper me. I would eat with you, play with you and sleep in bed with you. The princess was horrified at the very idea and had no intention of doing any such thing. She agreed to the condition as she thought the frog would not be able to reach the palace on his own and she had no intention of taking him along with her. She told him to hurry and get the ball back and waited with bated breath for her golden ball. The frog jumped into the pond and in no time at all came back with the golden ball. She took the ball from him and ran back to her palace as fast as she could. Princess, come back! You promised to take me with you! You can't break your promise! But the princess ignored to his calling and ran as fast as she could. She was relieved when she reached her room and soon forgot all about the frog. At night, while she was having dinner with her father, there was a loud knock on the door. Open the door, a oh princess! It's me! The frog from the pond. You promised to keep me with you. Being a true princess, you should keep up to your promise now. Who is that and what does he want? The princess, being a little scared of her father, told him about the afternoon incidents. How she broke her promise. You are a true princess, my love, and you should keep up to your promise, no matter what. Feeling helpless, the princess opened the door and let the frog enter. He hopped on to the seat next to her and asked her to let him eat from her plate. The frog ate till his tummy was full. But the princess couldn't eat a single bite thinking about the slimy frog eating from her plate. Then the frog asked her to carry him to her bedroom and let him sleep in her bed. Unwillingly, she picked him up in her hands and went upstairs. The frog jumped on her bed and snuggled cozily in her huge soft bed.
The next morning, the princess got up to find the frog missing from her bed. Happily, she hopped from her bed, thinking that the ordeal was over. But as the night fell, the knock again happened. And again the frog ate from her plate and slept in her bed. Feeling sad about sharing her food and bed, she went to her father and asked him if she could stop now. The king again told her that a promise was a promise and cannot be broken. It was the third night when the frog came in again to eat and sleep in her bed. But the next morning, the princess was astonished to see that the frog was not in her bed. And a handsome young prince was standing next to her bed. What? Who are you? Where is the slimy frog? Dear princess, it's me, the frog. A witch cast a spell on me that could be broken only if a princess would let me eat in her plate and sleep in her bed for three nights. You broke that spell by keeping your promise and here I am standing in front of you. I am the prince from the neighboring country. Would you like to be my wife? Not able to resist the handsome prince, she said yes, but had something more to say. Oh prince, I would love to be your wife. But how would you forgive me for being so rude to you? She was guilty like hell. But the prince was a humble man. He said, Oh my dear princess, I can understand your reasons and I am ready to forgive you. But you have to promise me that in future you won't judge anybody by the way one looks or the job one does. Everyone is equal and that's how they should be treated. Equally. Saying this, the prince took her in his arms and decided to take her to his kingdom where they lived happily ever after. Oh dear, you are right. We should always keep our promises and help people in need. Thanks for the lovely moral story. Come Tofu, let's go and play some games now. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. What happened, Tofu? What is it that you are thinking? Yes, dear. I am not able to understand how can a person win the race if he is slow and yet steady? There is a very famous story behind this. Should I tell you that first? Sure. 
The Hare and the Tortoise Long ago, in a forest, a small get-together of animals was taking place. You know what? I can beat anyone in this forest. Nobody can beat me in a race. Yes, I have seen him running. I bet he can beat anyone in this forest. Suddenly, from the crowd, they hear somebody laughing. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You think you can beat me in a race? I may not disagree with you, O oh Mr. Hare. But I might not deny that I have no fear of competing with you. Oh really? So let's have a race and let's see who wins. So one fine sunny day, all the animals gathered for the race. Everybody was sure that the hare is going to be a clear-cut winner. said the hare proudly. <laughs> now let's go, old man. I'll beat you in a second. The hare runs so fast that all the things on the path go for a spin. On the other hand, the tortoise is running too, but at such a pace that even snails could pass by him easily. Suddenly, the hare stops and looks behind. Oh my lord! That tortoise is gonna take ages to reach this point. So let's just stop here and take some rest. By the time he reaches here, I would get good rest and then cover him up in a blink of a second. In the meanwhile, the tortoise slowly and steadily reaches the point where the hare is fast asleep. He very quietly tiptoes past the hare and the hare is all ignorant of this fact. Suddenly, the hare gets up by the rows of the crowd, cheering up the tortoise. Go tortoise, go! Go tortoise! Oh my lord, how is that possible?
forever. I kept on sleeping for so long that the tortoise is about to finish the race. He runs and runs and runs. But to his disappointment, the tortoise just manages to finish the race before he could. In the story, the hare was so full of himself. He was overconfident that he would surely beat the tortoise in the race. Because he is faster than that poor being in every other way. But, but the hare underestimated the tortoise and succumbed in his own fake overconfidence. Yes, and that's why only a person who thinks calmly and is not overconfident of himself wins the race in every sphere of life. Proud people can't survive for long. Hmm. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.